Hey guys, RPM here. Hope y'all doing well and having a really great day in this video. I am going to be taking apart two RTX A2000s. I have a stock one here and then I have a modded RTX A2000. Actually, I'm not quite sure which one's the stock one, but uh, once we open it up, I want to show you guys the difference because of the mod that has been done on these cards in order to achieve 49 to 50 mega hash. This is something the community wants to know and so I have the information from jkgventures.tech. They sent me a document showing what part is exactly needed to solder on the front side of the A2000. So in this video, I'm gonna take off the shroud. I will show you guys the difference and uh, exact part number and all that stuff on where you need to uh, do the solder job essentially on the A2000 and uh, I will explain that. So thank you JKG Ventures. But guys, I have to talk about the disclaimer, right? The risk of doing something like this. If anyone decides to do this by themselves, you know, there's a risk that you may brick your card, burn your card, you know, all these types of things that you're gonna do custom to a GPU, you have the risk of breaking it. So if you decide to do something like this, that's on you, all right? So I have to say that disclaimer first before anyone tries to attempt this themselves. I would say most people do not have like a soldering machine or experience in doing that. So just beware, I know there's probably a million YouTube videos out there on how to solder stuff on, you know, PCB or GPUs. So anyone can probably do it, but that disclaimer has to be said there because there could be some case where somebody bricks their RTX A2000 if they try to achieve something like this. Anyways guys, let's go ahead and take these apart and we'll see on the front side of what we need to change. So let me just put my camera on the tripod and let's get going. Okay, I got my trusty iFixit tool here. And so guys, let's get started. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, seven different screws that we need to take off here. Now I'm not sure if we need to take off the IO bracket here, I'm assuming we need to, but let's just take out these first. All right guys, so before I begin here, I just wanna mention this video is sponsored by nerdgears.com. If you guys are looking for any crypto mining hardware or GPUs, nerdgears.com is the place if you guys are interested. Use offer code REDPENPEN for 2% off your whole order if you guys are interested. Links down below. All right guys, so already taken off two screws here. I don't know if this one's the modded one or the stock one. I guess we're gonna find out here in just a sec. Apparently, this is pretty easy to take off the front plate. So the front fan shroud, which should be, uh, looks, feels to be pretty easy. Now, can I just pull this out? No, I need to take off, I think I need to take off this as well. And let's take apart this. Yeah, the IO bracket needs to come out as well. Now this, yeah, there's more screws here on the side, I believe. Okay, this one requires a little bit bigger hex tool. Yeah, there we go. All right, now I can take it out. So this comes out. Okay. Now, is there, oh, there we go. Now this comes out, just like that. Nice. Okay, there is the fan power. That's the fan power right here. So we can just, I can probably just pull that out. Yep, there we go. Now, okay. So, I believe, that's, this is the stock one, I believe. Let me just quickly unscrew this one in a snap. Okay, this is the modded one and this is the stock A2000. So. On here, the difference, I was just looking at it, is this part right here. Now, this probably doesn't do justice on video. My camera cannot zoom in that well, but there is a document I'm gonna show you guys right now that I want to explain. So that's the part here that you need to solder in. So let me read the document from jkgventures.tech. He showed me this and wanted me to read this for you all, all right, just to let you all know. The NVIDIA A2000 6 GB and 12 GB power limit removal mod from JK&G Ventures. Disclaimer, this document is for entertainment purposes only. No factual assertions are expressed or implied. 
JKG Ventures will not be held liable for any damage resulting from attempting the activities described in this document. All right, guys, just have to mention that. Here we go. So you can see by the pictures that uh, due to the nature of the hardware and voltage delivery design, not only does the actual voltage applied to all the board level components not increase, but the power draw can't reach unsafe levels for the PCIe X16 slot. The memory on these cards is actually undervolted to 1250 millivolts instead of the spec 1350 by Samsung. Likewise, the core is running in the 700 millivolt range instead of the normal voltages seen in other GA102 GPUs. Because of all this, no matter where you put your overclocks, you shouldn't be able to pull more than about 90 watts from the slot. Unlike normal shunt mods, this modification removes the power limit while reporting power usage through the PCIe X16 slot. Only replace the shunt resistor on the cooler side of the PCB solder, a 5 ohm uh, 0.005 resistor on top of the existing resistor. Boom. Done. It is extremely important to get the solder joint here and that the resistor lays totally flat. Use a high quality flux and high quality solder. We recommend changing the thermal pads to a high quality, high thermal transfer rate pad, replacing the factory paste on GPU core with a high quality thermal grease, which uh, you guys saw, I did do a video showing the difference between a thermal padded one and pasted one versus a stock A2000 and the memory temperatures was a huge difference. So last part here I wanna read from jkgventures.tech says, if you don't feel comfortable poking a soldering iron around the inside of your expensive GPU, find a local electronics repair shop or contact us at info at jkgventures.tech. You can also order the service directly from our website at www.jkgventures.tech, link down below for a small fee. We can also replace the thermal pads and thermal paste for a small additional fee. All right, please do not try this if you are not 100% confident in your abilities. There is no shame in finding a professional to do this for you. It is easy to brick your card if you don't do this correctly and overheat any component on the board. Okay guys, so I want to read all that. Thank you so much JKG Ventures for opening this up for everyone to essentially do this themselves. And so you guys can see that there is that R005, I guess, uh, little chip there that needs to go on top of the existing one. So looking at my stock A2000 versus the modded one here, it looks like that chip just sits literally right on top of it. Okay, it sits right on top of it. I don't know if you guys can see the double layer on this part right here, and then the single layer on the uh, stock one right there. So yeah, that's, that's it. That's simply what needs to be done on to getting to enable 49 to 50 mega hash on your a2000 guys that i i hope that's the info a lot of people were looking for i mean like i, I just want to mention like the type of comments i was getting on that video and like a lot of toxic comments i even got a lot of emails from people and uh, jkg ventures also expressed this as well like the amount of toxic comments we got regarding this mod and like people were saying why didn't you just open it up to the community? Why didn't you just show us what mod it is? And it's just like, you know, of course, that was like the vocal minority of people, maybe a good 20, 30 people. I got like 30 emails around there. I don't know how many JKG Ventures got, but it was definitely mentally draining. And so that's actually one of the biggest reasons, you know, why JKG Ventures has opened this up for everyone. And I have to agree that I think this is something that needs to be shown out on the wild. And so people can essentially attempt this themselves but i guarantee as i was reading the comments in that my in my initial video that i did about this is that there is a lot of people that appreciate that there is a service of this of this kind to do this type of job on these a2000s and you know it's done by someone who knows their stuff and has the machine has the flux has the soldering iron stuff to do this right most people i'm gonna say 99 percent of people do not have that kind of stuff at home and has never attempted anything like that like myself i am a guy who has never soldered anything in my life so uh, for me to do something like that i i've never done i'm sure there's many youtube videos on you know how to do that sort of thing but you know, that's something that in case some people don't want to attempt, then by all means, you guys can, uh, there's now a way someone can do this themselves. And the information is now here, guys. So 
pretty cool. JKG Ventures, thank you so much. It's pretty awesome to see the difference here. It's just that simple chip right there, okay, on both of these. So that's that's pretty cool. Zero zero five. Uh, looks like mine's the other way here. Zero zero five uh, chip uh, resistor. That's pretty cool. Okay, guys, that's it. That's it. That's all I'm gonna do in this video. That's all I really want to do. Uh, what I am gonna have coming up is now I'm gonna be testing the A two thousands on a riserless motherboard. Okay, so I have a. Riserless, uh, this is a, what is this? This is a BTC 65V1.01 riserless board uh, that I got from bscryptomining.ca. Thank you for this, by the way. And uh, we did do a video on this already, but I'm gonna place, I'm gonna try placing eight of the modded A2000s, because I have 12 of them that uh, was modded by JKG Ventures. And so I'm gonna see, like the biggest thing I wanna try is if, you know, if I'm gonna burn this motherboard, if I have eight of those modded A2000s on here because they're gonna take about 85 to 90 watts at the PCIe slot, which is more than the spec of the, you know, 75 watts of PCIe. So I'm sure it'll be fine, but I, that's something I talked about in another video is that, you know, using a modded A2000 on a regular ATX board that doesn't have you know, the six pin on on here, like like these riserless boards, right? So I'm gonna see if that works. I'm sure it will, but yeah, I just wanted to uh, reiterate that, uh, you know, we just wanna be careful as uh, you don't wanna burn up your PCIe slots on a regular ATX board, which I don't know if that's true or not. I'm just, I'm saying that because I, wa I don't want people to burn their ATX motherboards. So uh, we will do that in another video. All right, guys, that's it. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know if anyone's gonna attempt this themselves. Yeah, all that good stuff. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you all in the next one. Have a good one and peace out.